Hello my friends, today we are in Photoshop and we are going to create this really cool dual lighting effect. If you see this is the before, this is the after we apply this colored gels and we will be doing all of this in post. It's very very easy process, just follow along and you will see exactly how it's done. So I'm going to delete all these layers that I made and edited the photo and we'll start from the beginning. Now, as a disclaimer, this is not a photo I took. This is a photo I got from Pexels. And uh, when I chose this photo, I chose it because it does have, as you can see, this is lightened from the sides and it has another light in the front. So technically there are three lights. If you ever want to know how a photo was uh, lit, then just um, zoom into the catch light and to the eye and you can see there are two strip boxes and uh, another soft box over here maybe even a tiny reflector so this could be really a four point lighting but these two strip boxes this is the ones i am interested in so if you uh, want to know how this was lit it was probably a strip box on each side at 45 degree behind the subject pointed towards the subject and then there was the soft box in the front up high going straight in the middle lightning you can see this uh, highlight going right in the middle and then the ones that are coming from the back on the sides and i can tell this is the lights are 45 degrees behind the subject because the light is highlighting this um, edge and the side of the face but then it's full shot over here on the shoulder so that means it's just kind of gliding over the hoodie he's wearing and then hitting his hand and this is uh you know the lighting is happening now how do we create that awesome gel effect the first thing I like to do is to put my subject on a black background. Now he's already on a black background, but yours if it's not, the way to do it is to, well, first I like to duplicate my layer. So command J to duplicate my layer. And then I will go over here on any of these selection tools and I'll click select subject. With my subject selected, I'll click on select and mask. And then I'll use this first uh, brush over here. This is the quick selection just to add the area that the you know Photoshop did not get as the subject. So I'll quickly paint over there. Then I will go on to the second brush. This is the refined brush. And I'll just paint it maybe around the hairline just to make sure I'm getting a good selection of the hairline. Something like that. And then I will go over here into the output tool. And I make sure I'm on output as a selection and click OK. And now we have our selection of the subject and I'll go into the adjustment layer over here onto this sign on the right and create a solid color and then pick a black color and click OK. Now, as you can see, it made the subject black, not the background. So I need to invert the mask. If you're not familiar with masking, white reveals black hides. So to invert it, click on the mask, command I and that will invert our mask. And now our subject is on a, back, on a black background. This is great. Now we have the subject, we have the background. Um, let's create the lighting. To create that cool light effect, we will use another adjustment layer. And the adjustment layer we'll use over here, it's a gradient map. Now, if you're not familiar with gradient map, it's looking crazy right now because I'm on default colors, white and black. So whatever colors you have over here into your color swatches, that's the default uh, gradient map that is going to apply. To change those colors, click on the gradient map and then go over here on the bottom. And uh, you can see the left side represents our shadows and the right side represents our highlights. Now it's adding white in the shadows and black in the highlights. I want to switch this and I'll click on this uh, white square over here and then click back on the color square, rectangle really. And I want to change this to black. I want black in the shadows because I don't want to apply any color on my shadows. I only want that color to hit the highlights because when a light hits a person, you would mostly see it were on those specular highlights. Then on the right side where I have my highlights, I'll click on this square, then click on the color. And here we'll choose a color. Let's start with the blue, maybe something like that. And that looks good. I'll click OK and then I'll also OK this dialog. So now we have a gradient map that goes from black to blue and it's affecting our whole image. Now we don't want to affect the whole image. We need to mask it in just in the parts that we want. So with the mask selected, 
We will uh, invert the mask to hide this whole adjustment from the whole image. To do so, we invert the mask by doing Command I. And now we don't see any of that blue adjustment. And then we'll take a brush, a nice soft brush, and make sure the white is the foreground color because we do want to you know, show this uh, blue color on our image. If you have different colors here in the swatches, just click D on your keyboard and that will reset them to white and black. So now with our white brush, we just paint into where this light would have hit the subject. So I think we'll be over here on the sides, maybe over here and the hand. I'm going to make my brush smaller so I can go right here. I don't want to paint on the fingers because the fingers are getting lit by this front light. So I will go to something like that for the blue color. Maybe it'll go just a little bit more here, just like that. And now we need to do our other color. To create another gradient map, I will just duplicate this one. So make sure your gradient map is selected and go Command J. And I will delete this mask because that is not the correct mask we need. So I will delete it. And now on this uh, gradient, now I'll click on it. And then instead of the blue, I will go and pick a different color. We can do an orange, we can do a pink, we can do whatever color we want. I'm going to go with some sort of red, something like that. And then click OK. Now we need to create a black mask so we can paint with white. To create a black mask, this is your masking uh, button over here. But if you hold down Option on the Mac, or I think it's Alt on the Windows, and click on the mask, that creates a black mask. Now make sure you click on the mask and then with a white paint brush, we will paint onto the left side where we think that light would have hit. So maybe something like that. And that is looking good, but let's see. If you want to toggle between white and black, just click on X on your keyboard and then you can erase by using the black. So there we are. Now, this doesn't look very natural, the light. So what I need to do is change the blending mode and I'll change it from normal to hard light. And that just blends in a little bit better. And I'll do the same with this one too, from normal to hard light. And then we can even reduce the opacity. Maybe, maybe if 100 is too much, reduce it to around 70%. And I'll do the same with this one too, maybe around 70%. Actually. The red, I like it. I like it was more intense. Something like that. Now, I don't want this color to affect my background. So in order to prevent that, I want my background to stay completely black uh, because normally the background will not be lit. And if you're you know, pushing the light from the back towards the subject, then it should not spill on the background. So what I will do is click on this layer, hold down shift, click on this one, and then group them by doing command G. Now with this uh, group, I want to take this subject layer mask and move it into my group. To do so, hold down option and just drag it up. But now it's the opposite. I want to mask the background, not the subject. So we have to invert the mask again, command I to invert it. And now you see, we don't have any light spill on the background. And then if you need to change the colors that you chose, you can always uh, open this group and go back into your colors, into your gradients, and you can change the color to your heart's content. You can go with pink, you can go with whatever color you want. Or maybe you just want to have the same kind of blue like you had before, and then you can have two blue lights over there and you can put another uh, gradient map and do an orange in the middle. That could be, uh, you know, cool effect too. So right now, let's see, we can change it to whatever we want. Let's stay with the red that we have decided on. So I will keep with that one. Now in this case, because there was three lights um, lighting this person, that's why I left this middle one because this is the third light. But I have another example here. This one was just a two lights lighting. So this is the original image I start with. And when I made my gradient maps, I pretty much color him like right in the middle. So this light was blue and this light was red. So this is how you will apply this uh, gel color 
you know do a lighting thing and if you do not have gels and you want to do this in post you can still take images just using a normal light make sure you get some nice rim light on your subject and then in post use this method to color it and get a cool effect like this i hope this was uh, helpful and you learned something new thank you so much for watching my name is skylar ewing and i'll see you in my next video